right, so I'm just going to do a quick demonstration of my plug and play solar system and then I'm going to explain what it's about. The battery is kind of low now. Right, so it's an all-in-one solar system excluding the solar panels which one can easily connect solar panels to to charge it and then it basically handles everything else. Anyway, um, let me just so quickly for the demonstration. This is the utility grid plug. This plugs, uh, you just plug this into any power outlet, right, for the transfer switch and then I'll now demonstrate the overload protection functionality of the transfer switch. So if the battery is low or if I connect anything that it can't handle, it will simply switch to the grid. It's a little awkward. Um, right, so it just switched a while ago. Hold on. Right, so it seamlessly switched to the grid without flickering the lamp off or anything. Using a relay, which I'll show you now. Right, so that red light is a battery low light. That's the relay. It's a bit of you, right? That's a 12 volt, 12 amp hour lead acid battery. That's the inverter, and this is the charge controller. So the point of this is to bear 100% plug and play solar system. So the purpose of it is to reduce the cost of solar system installation because normally you have to pay someone a lot of money to assemble all of these parts by hand and they may even have to construct one or two things on site to, to house the batteries, invert and everything neatly. So normally you'd have to buy a bank of batteries Buy a transfer switch, which is um, that bundle of electronics there, and then have them hook up the inverter, and you're going to be charged a lot of money for all of these things. So, the fact that this can be assembled entirely in a factory and then sold in a hardware store where anybody can just pick it up and then just plug it into a generator power inlet or plug an appliance into it too could really help with the adoption of solar power anyway so this is just a cheap 120 volt inverter I bought from a store PriceMart and this is a UPS battery it's general purpose but it was intended for a UPS battery which I bought from a computer store I bought that really from ABC Electrical which is a an electrical supply store and um, I got this microcontroller the EFM8 Universal B from Silicon Labs thanks to them for sending that so the microcontroller runs a program that constantly monitors the battery using the analog di to digital converter built into it and through this little circuit here which is a voltage divider it divides the battery voltage by 6.5402 so that the voltage stays well within the 3.3 volt limitation of the MCU and uh, so there are other parts like the 5 volt voltage regulator assist on there for what I'm gonna call a 5 volt power rail so I'm going to experiment with the concept of introducing a 5 volt DC power, power rail for hoses because I think it might be useful, might even save a little energy to have a 5 volt DC, high current 5 volt DC power outlet in every room or many in every room so you don't have to use all those wall warts as people call them and uh, also there might be a 12 volt rail in the future, but yes. So, um, another purpose that this serves is uh, to make it easier to resell and move your solar system because normally, if you. Right, let me just turn. Let me just plug this out. Sorry. 
as normally if you were to have a solar system installed the traditional way let me just quickly show you before I forget the solar power input so you can just hook up any 10 to 40 watt solar panel it's positive terminal here and a negative terminal there and then this will just handle everything else for you so you don't need to be an electrical expert to make it work so yes as I was saying it yeah, normally you'd have to pay someone to assemble a variety of things on site and that would cost an arm and a leg um, it was estimated by some to cost a, as much as a third of the solar system's cost to labor alone and also I'm wondering about permitting costs or soft costs as some would call them because if you are installing a solar system you or you know a variety of other electrical systems which connect to the grid etc or to your house you you may be required to have a government electrical inspector inspect it to ensure that it meets the national electrical code complies with the national electrical code so um, when manufacturing a package system like this uh, I'm not 100% sure but there's a chance that it might help to reduce those costs because you know, the permitting can be done on the, you know, the prototype before production so once they start producing these things uh, you can just plug them in with little or maybe even no permitting costs but as I said I can't confirm that it's just a theory which I'm looking into so um, the only thing I haven't been able to make plug and play is the solar panels themselves I'm actually working on that as well I want everybody to be able to just buy a solar system and just plug it in and that's it anyway um, so you may have heard of the Tesla Powerwall and the Tesla Powerwall 2 they are batteries which serve a somewhat similar purpose to this but I think this goes a bit further to integrate every single part except the solar panels because it has a transfer switch built in and the charge controller, the inverter and also a battery the power wall is primarily serves the purpose of a battery and I think it has an inverter in it so um, let me just take another look inside Right. So, um, if you want to know what the cost of the parts is, uh, well, this 400 watt inverter was $3,500 to make in. Let me just use US dollars from now on. That's 30 US dollars approximately after duty costs. Uh, so, it's more like a $20 inverter. These batteries are in the fifty to sixty dollars and uh, really was about ten dollars this microcontroller kit is thirty dollars although that's because of the number of extra peripherals that came with that LCD battery holder joystick among other things so the MCU itself which is a tiny little chip under the picture of the B that I'm trying to focus on it's actually one dollar and twenty three cents not including tax. So, charge controller currently is responsible for switching the current on to when the battery needs to be charged and switching the current off and otherwise disconnecting the solar panel from the battery if the battery is fully charged to prevent overcharging. So I think soon I will take over battery charging using my circuit here because it's already able to monitor the battery voltages and determine if the battery is low or if the battery is high so that red light turns blue if the battery is um, you know, partially charged but not low like for example if it's 50% charged it's going to turn blue red means that the battery is low or that it's currently being overloaded in which case it will switch the load over to the grid so whatever is plugged into this 120 volt outlet so it will be automatically connected to either the grid, if necessary, or 
will be powered by this inverter. As I said, the goal of this is to fully automate everything to make it as cheap and easy to the computer system as possible. So, I'll provide more updates in the near future and uh, also I'm open to suggestions on how to make it more, this way more modular, etc. Because it's also going to, um, another purpose of it is to make it easier to replace and install back and add batteries to it too. So eventually it will accommodate that and in the future I'm hoping to make it more expandable so that if someone wants more power to a house or anything like that they can just add it. They can just drop in a battery or drop in an inverter almost effortlessly. Anyway, um, so I'm not sure if I told you this is a 120 watt flood lamp which I used in. And the battery was low, which is why it switched it over to the grid. So, um, right. Right. thanks for watching.